The reason why you need to build intimacy with God is because of the day of trouble. If you if you have him as a friend, and you know to build intimacy, it takes effort. You wake up in the morning, you begin to talk to him. And you pray in tongues, you pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues for like 45 minutes, one hour, your spirit opens. Right? And if you have not been praying for a long time, you will need two hours. Because your spirit eh, is sleeping. Just like Jesus slept in the boat, Jesus can sleep in your life. So you need like two hours. And in those two hours, your soul will be noisy. Say, ah, yo God, yo God, yo God, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. I can see La Montelli. <laughs> you just remember that ah, you, you should send this person a text. Send the person a text. Send the text. Send the text. Send the text. Send all those all, all of that noise is inside them. And that's why if you want to get serious, sometimes we need to give somebody your phone and then lock it. Let the person lock the door from outside. So that there's no hope of yielding to that noise. That noise is the barrier of the flesh. The flesh doesn't want you to experience life from the other side. Doesn't. Doesn't want you to experience life from the other side. And so when you cross that barrier, then you enter into a quiet space. That quiet space, you pray in tongues for like one hour, for like two hours, it's quiet. There's no response. When you hit the third hour, then symbols will begin to appear. That's why strong men normally, minimum, they digest three hours of prayer a day. That's minimum. You don't have anything. You don't have any preaching. You don't have any. Just, just to live life. Three hours. You will invest in your spirit if you are going to make a mark in life. Life is not natural. If by, by your brain, by what you studied in Harvard, you, you become a billionaire, I'm assuring you that if you switch on your spirit, you will become a billionaire in, in a, a multi billionaire in your flesh you have your least potential but in your spirit you have your greatest potential so i labor for intimacy so that when i come into a situation that needs a response i, I talk to my friend i say i know how to, to i know what to do to my heart i know how to angulate it for me to hear him. if you cannot call his hand in you cannot do that now you are not a strong man if you cannot call him in now and he will respond to you you have invested in the wrong thing and you will never know until the day of trouble that evil day that demons that witches ganged up together against your destiny that's the day you will know whether you're, you were investing in the right thing because the bible says that he that falls in the day of adversity adversity will come adversity is not necessarily bad it is it is a revealer It means you are strong in the wrong thing. You are strong in gossip instead of prayer. You are strong in the knowledge that is in your soul instead of the knowledge that is in your spirit. If you can't call him and he responds to you, it means you don't have intimacy with him. You don't talk to him. Other things are more important to you than talking to him. I can take a walk and just discuss with him just stop it and then he now begins to tell me okay that person you prayed for that nothing happened this is why i'll go back and write it down because i'm a researcher i need to build a body of truth that I can use to instruct people when you call him if he, if he doesn't respond he doesn't know your voice you've not yet acknowledged the fact that you are totally insufficient without his help so you have all that help boosters apart from him so you are not strong in him the greatest investment you can do for yourself is to build that intimacy with him hallelujah i don't need to go to harvard to make millions all i need to do is i'll just go and cry then he will show me one thing to invest in that's how i because i don't have time to struggle in the marketplace like other people so he will just give me one insight And I've not been able to recover from the wisdom that his voice brings. You don't need to ask me to follow the Lord. I have seen how wonderful it is. This measured Christian life that you are doing, you are just convincing yourself that it's okay. Coming to church and thinking that because you are born again, you will not suffer. I'm telling you that even in your calling, in order for you to grow in your calling, in order for you to be 
consistent in your calling there are sacrifices you must accept that this is my lot for life hmm. i know you don't like what i'm saying hmm. do you know what it means when the when the apostles say we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer like someone that is keeping a shrine he dedicates the person to the shrine so he gives himself to the shrine what he becomes is a product of his dedication to that spirit what you become is a product of your dedication to prayer you were given to prayer so if prayer has not yet shaped you you are not yet operating at your maximum capacity when you give yourself to something that thing will be the reason for your sacrifice when you begin to pray a time comes when god sucks you in little by little it means he's asking you for more time you know and just in case you have discovered a way of existing without prayer very cheap pray for the devil and it's not because god has lost his strength it's just because you are not willing you where you are is a product of your willingness to join because all of us have the same possibilities have the same potentials in the grace of god but many of us have not yet accepted that sacrifice is an inevitable part of our engagement so a lot of people a few among us have accepted that long time ago I no longer count how many days I fast in a year. I no longer count how many hours I pray. I used to count it before, 12 hours. I'll put the clock and then I count 12 hours. This, okay, I was able to do 14 hours. Then I said, okay, let me see the highest I could do. I went for 18 hours in tongues. When it became my lifestyle, there was no need to count. Yeah, so I just flew. I can pray for three days because I gave myself to it. So the fountain will begin to expand. The capacity will begin to expand. And God is in the business of expanding capacity. There are dimensions of spiritual things you can't move with, with, with insufficient capacity. You can't move them. And it's not God's fault. If I make you feel okay and you don't have a prayer life, I lie to you. Because there is no one in the Bible. You, you check the Bible. Somebody says, ah, this church is growing and they are not praying. Ah, you find out why it is growing. No? Because the prescription in the book of Acts is that they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in breaking of bread, in fellowship, and in prayers. If those guys have devised another formula, it is not the Holy Ghost that is driving that place. It's not the Holy Ghost. Because people can gather. I was there in, in Manchester, Etihad Stadium. It was filled. Jesus was not in the center. So that you have some. It doesn't mean it is the Lord. If it's going to be the Lord, you must follow the prescription. And you cannot take prayer out of that equation you cannot take so those basic things you can't take them out that's what that's the mechanical energy that drives church life at any point in time where there's a decline in those matters then another civilization will begin to build you just sin will just start flowing up huh? wicked men looking for how to keep pastor will begin to they'll find a place con conducive put some prayer there ah. put some prayer there the witches will confess but if there's no prayer i assure you there are a lot of witches Many things that you do, many decisions that you took was not with your clear mind. You were under influence. Uh, I've seen both sides of the coin. So I can tell you how it, how it feels like. All right? There's also an experience of death, conformity to death, death to self, death to ambition. The only way to be walking this thing. And that experience is available because you were brought into the operating system of Christ's administration. He's working out death on your ambition. He's working out debt, a debt protocol on your agenda. He's working out a debt protocol on your preferences that are not consistent. They are not in line. alignment with God's will for your life. He's looking for how to frustrate it. So all of that is because of the context where we were brought into. Don't forget that the principle is a principle of substitution. So let's do 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 the realm allows for substitution and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him that died for them and rose again this is the implication of substitution the extent to which you will carry the authority of god this is one of the scriptures that will determine the extent to which you are a carrier of authority for instance, after you have received salvation, which is a product of substitution, if you now decide that you want to live your life according to your preferences, 
you are already violating the demands of substitution. Anytime you live in violation, it means that you are exposed. Satan can hunt in your farm. Satan can plunder. Satan can influence. Because the moment you receive salvation, you are no longer your own. The one that died for you is the one that should call the shots as to what you should apply your, your life to do. I was not a bad student while I was in university. And my desire was to lecture. And I was a bit good in what I studied. All right, so. And um, before I left school, one of our professors was made deputy VC in another university. And he wanted to carry me along so that I would study under him. So I got the job, lecturing job. But I went to pray on the field in the night. And while I was praying, the Holy Spirit ministered to me that of all the things written concerning you in heaven, lecturing is not one of them. It's not one of them. And, and I like knowledge. And one of my desires of wanting to lecture is that I have a, a lot of cramming our ability. So I wanted to just cram the notes and come for lecture without note. And I give them, it's something I can do right give them notes from my head give them structures from my head and lecture any course i'm doing i can do it without note. so that was just what i wanted to achieve by lecture you know when the flesh may the flesh not be <laughs> your motivation for anything in life so the lord now said in your archives in your file there's nothing written about you and lecture so i had to turn that off now, the man saw I was smart. The man saw I could maybe become something in the in that world, but it was not written concerning me. In fact, God said through prophecy days later, after the Lord confronted me with that position, He said through prophecy days later, through a reliable um, prophetic voice, that He will not allow me to do masters. I I, I almost had problem with the person that. <laughs> That prophesied that thing and then uh, so when when i was posted to benway and i was working at the depot in benway our members were influential people in one of the investors there so they went and got for their admission for me to do masters and all. the moment i saw my name on the notice board i lost my peace i lost my peace not for one day not for for one month and that's terrible so i went and told that lecturer the lecturer has lecturer's husband's elder brother was a senator at the time so i don't know how they did it but the school gave me my school fees back in check form and then give her the check that was how my peace that's the reason why i'm not a, a doctor today because even though i have accepted that i will not lecture i, I still won't tell it did be on record that i was a professor <laughs> He said that he died for you. The implication is that all of us that live now are indebted to him on the account of the principle of substitution. The only life I can live is a life that he prescribes. And if you are not living that prescription of life, there are, there are, there are various realms where your authority will not be acknowledged. And I'm telling you this as a man that has been in the field for a long time. And I've seen in my city, I told you the other day when you came to see me, that the number of deaths for pastors in my city annually is something to think about. So it's not as if that their callings were not valid. It's not as if they were immoral people. When you are in the heart of spiritual warfare, these are the matters that will come up. These are the matters that we come. You might want to do like other people. You might want to behave like other people. But God has a prescription for you. And that prescription is law for you because of substitution. Because of substitution. So God has not called you to be creative in the sense of let's be innovative. He has just called you to submit to the script that you already wrote before you were formed in your mother's womb. if you know nothing about why you are here on this side of heaven it's a call to prayer and fasting many 
people want God to help them, want God to intervene for them. But these people are not actually living within the scope of the description of what God has created them to be. And, and because of substitution, that's a big matter. Jesus was a young man when he went to give his life on the cross. There were so many things he would have done. He would have chosen to die at 75 or 80. But he died at 33. And the Bible says he was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? The people that are recipients of his great benevolence are supposed to be living for him. When you live for him and Satan comes, I've heard reports from people. There was this guy, demons used to come and beat him. I beat him in the night, leave him gasping for life in the morning. That was his experience for a long time. So he now came, he came to church and I accepted him as my spiritual son. Then the demons, they came home, but they couldn't beat him again. It's okay. Is it not that you, because you are submitting to that man now? So the demons knew that submitting under a man that is in alignment with God provides covering. The demons were wealthy. So he said, No, you, you say, Oh, no, I'm, I'm born again, I'm baptized in Holy Ghost. And how powerful you are in the realm of the spirit is dependent on how compliant you are with God in living out his own dream through your life. That's how powerful you And all of this is because of substitution. So you can now understand in the chapter of spiritual warfare, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he now comes to us and says, he's strong in the Lord. What's the meaning of that? How can you be strong in the Lord? Meanwhile, in the Greek, it means take advantage of the Lord. There are two, two instructions he gives us. He said, be strong in the Lord. Take advantage of the Lord. Take advantage of the power that is in his mind. Hallelujah. So if I'm going to be strong in the Lord, then I must understand the implication of what the Lord has done for me. Because all those things, they translate to currency in the realm of the spirit. Okay, let me show you currency. Um, I think we'll do it from Isaiah chapter 53. Then you see currency. It says, Who has believed our report unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men and man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he is despised and we esteemed him not surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smithing of god and afflicted all right so that's the currency page now verse five for he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for iniquities currency the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes were healed so everything he paid translates to spiritual concurrency that we can take advantage of so if you are going to be strong in the lord you need to know the extent of payment that strength is not in yourself that strength is in what the lord has already achieved because there is spiritual currency that is available in the realm of the spirit on the account of the payments so you need to be up to date because when we do legislation are you there with me when we do legislation and we are insisting that satan should leave we use those items of currency when we demand that people be healed is on the strength of the fact that the stripes are translated to currency when we ask for tranquility and peace it is because the chastisement guaranteed peace. There can be turbulence in my space because I would take advantage of the currency. Hallelujah. So, being strong in the Lord talks about faith in what Jesus has accomplished. 
that's part of what we use to trade in the realm of the spirit so you see if we say you be strong in the lord we are referring to finished works that have produced currency if we say be strong in the power that is in his mind we are referring to current works that the holy spirit is doing in me now you can't win a battle just on finished works no the holy spirit will need to give you current wisdom on that matter so one aspect is finished works the other aspect is current works of the holy spirit he said take advantage of it it's just like when you are praying in tongues praying in tongues praying in tongues so we teach people how to pray in tongues but we also teach people that the moment the holy spirit begins to initiate a protocol maybe you are speaking in tongues speaking in tongues speaking in tongues and then instantly the holy spirit in your spirit man begins to sing a song stop speaking in tongues take advantage of the power that is in his mind that song is a vehicle it's a means of transportation it is designed to take you to another place another place that desta it is designed to give you access to another possibility so as you are praying and praying you are listening on what the holy spirit is pouring out into your vessel and then the moment he begins to pour something out you leave what you are doing and you hop on on his vehicle and then that vehicle will transport you to where the things you seek reside be strong i know people that will be praying in tongues and then the holy spirit begins to move within their vessel even though they are discerning it they believe that it is superior for them to remember in it it means that you have denied the power that came the vehicle that came to actualize your hopes so a spiritual man is a man that knows when the vehicle of the spirit of god switches on and he stops every other activity to allow the holy spirit guide him The reason why there's a prescription be strong in the lord is still because of substitution because on the strength of substitution you no longer have a life your life is dead the reality that is left now is his life and that's where your context is that's where your strength must be drawn from how many of us know if when the holy ghost stands up he's standing he's standing in you do you know that experience because you have not yet explored what it means to be strong in the Lord. You live your life in the mundane from the strength of your intellect, your calculation. I assure you, even though you might be a great guy, you are living off your least potential. And it will interest you to know that if you are faced with a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, you'll be no match. No match. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Do you know the experience of the Holy Spirit allowing you to see through him? Do you know when you are in transport, spiritual transport? Do you know what do you know what that experience is? Do you know what it means when the Holy Spirit gives you capacity to discern personalities in the spirit? You can have a discussion with an angel. Do you know what it means? You can Joel, you and Joel can talk, have a discussion. You and Paul can have a discussion. Do you, do you know what it means? Do you know the experience? Do you know how it feels in the spirit? Now, how do you intend to get ahead of Satan when you are not abreast with the spiritual experiences of the strength into which you have been rooted? Be strong in the Lord. You will, you will see people like Zachariah in the book of Luke chapter 1 having a discussion with an angel when last did you have a discussion it will interest you to know that if you are born again and you've been in love for a while i can say that um 90 percent of us in this place have had angelic encounters before but the point is you didn't know it was because you are not strong in the power that is in mind is in his mind you don't have access to the spiritual knowledge that will give you the confirmation of spiritual things so that you can know them for what they are. As long as you are limited in this dimension of education, you will be incompetent, incapacitated in very practical situations. I was preparing for this conference that we just finished. Pray, 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 pray. 
So, the number two man, my number two man, Nan calls me. This is our pastor. This is our younger pastor. His mom came to visit him so that she can attend the conference and she's dying. I said, Oh my God! And jumped into my car. I went there. I saw our Bible school people were praying. Praying on her. Seriously. I was aware of the fact that if I joined the prayer, we'll pray till evening. What I needed was not the ability to pray. What I needed was the insight. So as they were praying, I was trying to find out what is going on in this place. Then I discovered that it was a family issue. I discovered that her sisters had access to spiritual power and they wanted to cut her off that day. Why that day? I don't know. I said, ah. I said, Your sisters want you down. She said, She's aware of it. So I didn't go into the details. So I said, Sit. Are people dragging land? What is the problem? What? No, no, no need for it. Then the next insight is okay, how do we? Because that's word of knowledge. What I needed thereafter, after she confirmed that my word of knowledge was right, is word of wisdom. What is the, the people were still praying? I didn't join them. Uh, then when the word of wisdom came, I had missed it. The prayer they were praying for since morning. In 20 minutes, we have stopped, we have ended that. Thing. Then I gave her a prophecy that in six hours, when you put your leg on the ground, and it will be, it will be okay. So I entered the car again. I ran away. Now, if you come and join them praying like that, eh, that prayer that has you don't your senses, spiritual senses are not operational. That's what someone that is not strong in the Lord will do. So, since you are not strong in the Lord, you cannot, you don't understand the handle of the Holy Ghost. So, you, your prayer may not even be able to change anything. I ran back to my closet and continued my prayer. Continue my prayer. Continue my prayer. Hallelujah. Came back from a trip. Saw our pastors. Free for someone that was, that had a mental health challenge. And they, they've been praying. So I came there. I looked at them and I pitied them. Because if this, if this is all you can do in this circumstance, there's a proof that you are not strong. Enough. The moment I entered there, I checked. So no. Before you can help us spiritually, take her to the hospital. So I gave the woman money. I said, take her. They injected her. She slept first day, slept second day. Because she wasn't talking. Third day, she started talking. I said, okay, bring her. Then we began to engage. Then she now told me the things she didn't tell any of them. Because she wasn't talking. Then we trapped the spirit. In a discussion. Not, no, in a discussion. So if you come, when you come, you will see one of the girls on the camera. That's it. The demon has been arrested. Be strong in the Lord. It is substitution that made our strength to be in the Lord. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.